Hey folks, welcome to the CNCF webinar, Understanding Feature Flags and Improving Feature Management. We'll be talking about uh, a lot more on feature flags today. So let's get started. Uh, so first of all, my name is Prithvi Raj and I'm working as a technical community manager at Harness. I'm a CNCF ambassador. I've been leading the community for the Litmus Kiosk uh, incubating project, CNCF incubating project. And you might have seen me doing a lot of chaos engineering. And right now I've started building communities for feature flags as well as FinOps. And I've been also organizing a lot of events in the community. Uh, some some of them are Chaos Carnival, KCD Bangalore, Chennai, uh, Chaos Engineering Meetups every now and then. And then you can connect with me on these socials. So for the agenda for today, we'll be talking about software delivery and its challenges. We'll also talk about the deployment inefficiencies that can be fixed. We'll start introducing feature flags, some common use cases, the software release workflow with feature flags, how to do feature flags the right way, some case studies, key learnings, and eventually about the community. So before we get started with what feature flags are, let's discuss some challenges. I mean, the modern software development or delivery has has demanded the uh, code to be shipped fast, and it's it's getting faster day by day. And it's it's not just the code that that's you know at, at risk, but even the the customers, the end users, want it to be faster, want applications to deliver faster, and and without without any risk, and that's why. The, there's CICD is has required some upgrading itself. And that is where the idea of feature flags was brought in, I believe. And software delivery wasn't just enough in terms of CICD, but there, there was something that was required in terms of enabling and disabling features and making sure that features are delivered uh, with without any risk, with higher velocity and with, uh, I mean, as and when required. So before that, we'll we'll talk about uh, the challenges itself. And I believe that software delivery has many challenges, but I've segregated them into technical and business challenges. So from the technical aspect, obviously, uh, there's there, there are a lot of uh, feature branches in development. Uh, it's it's hard to test multiple solutions. It's it's uh, I mean it's hard to identify all the risks that are associated with decision making on what to build, how to build, and rollbacks due to failed deployments of individual features are pretty common, and and these these challenges are faced day in and day out by by developers, uh, by the the engineering teams, and it's it's very hard to identify how to I mean, from from a from a granular aspect that how, uh these challenges can be mitigated if and it's difficult to manage these large amount of features and codes with especially when the the eventual goal is to uh, run them in in production so and and moving on if if we talk about business challenges i mean the, obviously there's a loss of customer confidence it's it leads to negative customer impact uh, due to release quality issues, or rollbacks or roll forwards can cost business time as well as a lot of money. Companies end up lo losing millions of dollars in that sense, and then time and effort spent in in the whole team and and the loss of confidence and lack of governance leads to a lot of challenges for businesses itself. Today, a lot of companies are facing these challenges, and there there are there are frictions between engineering release timelines, teams. Uh, there, there are uh, issues between the product team and the marketing team. So these are some challenges today uh, that software delivery has been facing uh, where, and CICD itself has faced being part of the community for so long. This is something that I have learned itself that these are the challenges that, that, are, that have been hard to mitigate. And if you look at the larger problem in terms of features or delivering features, there's been, I mean, Developers day in and day out have faced tight deadlines. They have faced uh, a lot of stress during deployment. Personal uh, personalization hasn't been that good, and which has uh, in in return has had repercussions such as reduced velocity, increased risks, poor developer experience, and eventually, uh, as as I mentioned, that these these rollbacks, these these bad features have have cost them dearly. 
so moving on what are the fixable uh, deployment inefficiencies or uh, what are the inefficiencies that that have been usually i mean there with today's deployments that are of, offering all or nothing basically and it it creates rework and pain it i mean there's slow releases i mean they are slow costly and and new features in production become become difficult and you can't uh, test certain features because i mean the, every feature has a different segment and rolling them out progressively becomes becomes difficult and similarly bug fixes take a lot of time it's costly there's an added expense due to targeted rollouts when when you are trying to ensure that that a, a certain group of people are able to access a certain feature a certain feature or a few features and then you have different features for a certain group and this if if i have to take an example this is something that i have seen myself Let, let's say uh, if if i'm using an application let's say a food delivery application in recent times if i have to take an example and i've seen that the same application that is being used by my friend has has got some different features and i have been delivered some different features if you talk about instagram they have some different features for their beta version uh, they have some different features uh, features for their alpha versions so so these these are the problems that each and every app uh, application or uh, companies that are del delivering these applications face and that is where uh, i mean feature flags come into play where uh, the the idea is to uh, i mean ensure that features are decoupled in the right sense or let's say a developers can uh, conditionally turn certain sections of their code on and off and and it's it's to be honest an extension of continuous delivery so the the idea is to obviously uh, you know you can think of feature flags as a new way to you know building and releasing applications by clearly defining features components that can be changed toggle on and off individually you allow for experimentation control rollouts to different users and and as well as uh you know letting more people such as developers your sres your uh product managers your support teams to turn and turn turn on and turn off things for customers as as you require so if you have to simplify feature flags in 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 some sense then you know these feature flags are essentially used to create let's say private swim lanes for developers where they can ship a feature directly to customers and then have a control over who sees it get feedback turn it off and turn it on as needed it's it's basically like 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 a switch as as this diagram depicts and uh, what what are the values of feature flags again uh, as as we 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 talked about the risks of of feature flags or how feature flags are defined i mean feature flags shift the lowest level of control to each individual artifact that's in production and it's it's more granular than production deployment as as we we spoke about so you know at at a higher level i mean feature flags give a lot of power to developers to create better features deliver them faster and at the same time they ensure that engineering is not the bottleneck for the business and that's why it it delivers value in terms of you know the technical sense it's like you shift responsibility to the business to de determine release dates you release new features faster and iterate rapidly without negative consequences you never roll back a good new feature due to a different bad feature or you are able to easily release individual features to production daily and that that's why it has a lot of uh, positive outcomes as well where you know there's less time spent remediating feature fa uh, failures in production there's less time spent in coordinating releases there's less time spent in auditing for compliance there are more bug fixes and eventually more features are shipped and from a business perspective if if you if you talk about what are some uh, i mean we spoke about some key challenges but you know you are able to deploy features more frequently there's shift control of feature releases uh, to customer facing teams there's increase in net retention rate there's a lower churn rate and obviously there's less less exploitation of security loopholes and and eventually this helps the business grow and and do better 
so so we'll take a look at uh, some uh, i mean common use cases of where to use feature flags there are a few ways to look at when you should use feature flags and we will explore some of them and another way to look at it is your when is your tech stack ready or when is it ready to use feature flags but we'll we'll talk about that later on perhaps so if if we have to talk about different roles itself so for developers of course it helps increase velocity it helps them ship code faster and it decouples releases and deployments from a devops engineer perspective it helps them get operation control maybe kill switches help let's say kill an application or kill a feature itself the operation control uh, is helps them to respond to rollout issues automatically and it basically automates the process for them and from a product manager perspective you they are able to control releases ab tests they are able to learn and experiment quickly and and releases are delivered in a better sense and from a sales or support aspect you can see that uh, they 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 have better access to customers uh, the customer facing teams get more empowerment and it it helps in in you know uh, understanding the customer better and basically help uh, the the business better or you you say delivering features in a in a better sense and moving on uh, i mean that the current state of feature flags teams solve this themselves but there are limitations of course the power of feature flags has not been fully leveraged i mean a lot of people are using homegrown feature flag solutions i mean i i wouldn't suggest that homegrown solutions are not good but i believe that with a lot of things that are developing and and there are so many open source projects out there shout out to open feature that's been doing uh good in terms of leveraging the power of feature flags or feature management i would say and and then there's lack of confidence and governance where you know the the, the current state is that people are happy with with their ci cd solutions and they have not taken a, a look at at what other things that can be done or brought up but you know getting started with feature flags is easy i mean if you if you talk about a lot of other developer tools out there it it might take a, a longer time to integrate but this this doesn't really take a, a long time i mean you just need to ensure that let's say your your features are in place and you can you can usually find i mean feature flags as as you know a few lines of code or a few commands it's basically a comment as as they say and and that's that's where uh, if if you are just moving the comment as a, as a feature it it became becomes a flag or basically acts like a button right so the current state obviously also means that there's lesser adoption the community has been has been growing i mean people have not seen feature flags as something which is essential but slowly there's there's with with the uh, identification of how important uh, managing your features are i think the 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 shift has has started to you know ensuring that feature flags is is being adopted and if you look at it from a software release uh, workflow perspective i mean developers are writing code but you know any changes are put behind a feature flag so that makes delivering code on time testing features for impact easier if you if you talk about you know devops engineers releasing code to production it it becomes makes deployment easier and and, and helps bringing no change to the process and it continues i mean you move on to the product manager side and then obviously the the customer facing side so it acts in a loop where where the value you know eventually helps you iterate on your features faster and and deliver features with with quality as we spoke about during the value of feature flags and from business perspective as you can see this is an example of a new ui feature flag that we have taken and that i mean they they can be managed in terms of kitops or yaml files and it helps uh, you know automate your business processes you are developing and then you are automating so it's it's i mean 
and and then eventually if you want you can create your flag rules how uh, how you want your flag to behave if you if you're not sure uh, how how they behave you 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 know you have to understand that feature flags get applied to end users of of the application right so or you, you can call them targets or other other systems may call them users sessions so you know these these targets uh, have attributes that you define and there, there are various attributes that can be there such as email licensing plan location other uh, characteristics and then you can use those attributes to decide which flags to serve them right so i i, I took the example of a new ui but let's say if i have to take some more examples uh, of of what what can be used or or what what are the key business processes then you know they they involve uh, i mean making the velocity better because you can merge your feature branches sooner and deploy more often without worrying or isolating complete features it's easier to control the state of changes across environments with less custom scripting and you can hand these things over to your stakeholders to decide how or when when to make them work. So moving ahead, uh, how feature flags do it or what are uh, the best ways feature flags function? It helps you control access to your features. As I, as I mentioned before, there's a, a, a toggle feature that that's mostly available in in your production environments where you can switch on or switch off the features that you want it helps you resolve issues without without rollbacks uh, as we, as we mentioned before so uh, it it just uh, helps you i mean um, avoid rollbacks and and save time and let it, uh, i mean mitigate risks uh, it also helps you deploy in a in a smaller sense, which I mean, as as we spoke about large deployments, uh, hosting a lot of risks. I think if if you are deploying, uh, I mean features one by one or in in a smaller sense, then obviously there's less risk in in terms of you know runtime uh, while while the systems are in production. It also minimizes the blast radius of changes. So eventually, there are a lot of. Uh, I mean, you can you can serve uh, your requirements faster, and and it becomes easier for you to you know go ahead with your deployments or your feature deployments, and outside engineering itself, as we spoke about your sales teams, your customer facing teams, they they are eventually empowered with how. Uh, feature flags help you toggle in between your features. So moving on, uh, let's take a look at a few case studies and what are the challenges a few users of feature flags out there have faced. So, I mean, let's take a look at this uh, enterprise. It's called Entior and they, they were facing uh, a lot of challenges to stabilize their pre-production environments you know, as, as development teams increased and, you know, the, I mean, there were initially 12 teams and then it became 20 teams. And and the the it was essential to reimagine delivering software itself as we spoke about. And, you know, uh, software teams have their methodologies. They, they might end up using different uh, feature flag providers or they might want to deliver their software differently. They want to operate their def uh, deployment. So, you know, having a unified approach was necessary, and that is why just you know they enhanced their their idea of software delivery with uh, you know having uh, feature flags in place, which helped them you know increase deployment frequency from twice per week to fourteen times per week. It helped them uh, decrease their Fail, uh, change failure rate from 20% to 5% and there's a, there was a reduced rollback time from 2 hours to 5 hours in eventually you know ensuring that this feature flags becomes successful for them and you know there are a lot of uh, problems that you know feature flags over the time uh, have have incurred or presented in front of the community i mean 
teams uh, didn't get time to clean them up, leading to, uh, them to, uh, I mean, me me messy or sprawling code or a lack of uh, clarity around which flags still matter. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the engineers were still creating their flags, but they did not know what they meant. They, they did not know who was responsible for turning the flag on. Sometimes it's the sale person, sometimes it's the product manager. So sometimes it's the engineering manager. So it, it you know, felt like playing a hot potato somewhat. And everyone who operated flag eventually had access to production, right? So which which felt uh, insecure in, in some in, in some sense. Teams started feeling insecure. And you know, that's where the solution came into place where you know you have a discussion up front of how to clean up the flags promptly once the feature has been rolled out uh, decide on who owns the process and agree on regular review reviews of the flag inventory and necessity uh, the the recommendation is also to make extensive use of uh, the RBAC mechanism and bringing uh, a security and compliance methodology into process or you know by deciding who to onboard to feature flags and with what permission level while feature flags do not give anyone access to customer data it's obviously necessary that you know that you should know your intentions about who has that access and even if there may not be single owner for a flag uh, it's it's very necessary early on in development uh, that it's be it it be relevant to a cross functional group to have the conversation and outline who should do what and who should not do what and who should update the flags at different stages and th this is uh, the learning from from the community that that we have had over th these various case studies moving on there's another case study that uh, there was too much risk uh, too slow for a for a release process so i mean again this this is another uh a company called metricus they needed to be able to reduce the risk of feature deployment while simultaneously increasing the velocity at which uh, they shipped code and they their uh, i mean they they believe that eventually it helped them uh, you know uh, apply uh, cicd in a, in a in a proper way where it was it wasn't just uh, about, uh, I mean, applying CI/CD, but you know, making it faster, releasing features to customers in a faster sense, and making it, I mean, easier for them to, you know, commit to production. I mean, if if you have to talk about them itself, then I think it, they they reduced uh, production. I mean, committing to production by sixty six percent. And they, they are able to take smarter risks, feature development, help them solve two, I mean, two major problems. That is one is they don't have to decide internally on how or who has to create it and then how how to push it. So it, it becomes more diversified. The responsibility of releases become more diversified as, as it says. And lastly, uh, if we talk about this use case, Tyler Tech, uh, so they, their product teams were asked to have more control over feature releases and exposure instead of deployment. And they they had to, I mean, take, take the next step in leveling up the increase in velocity and controlling their software delivery processes. So, I mean, they, they wanted to achieve um, unparalleled velocity, I would say. I mean, that's where they believed that CICD is not enough. And... You know, feature flags obviously uh, help you integrate better with the CI/CD side of things, and it it makes your, I mean, the customer account team responsive and helps deliver features, as as we we mentioned previously. So with this, we'll we'll just talk about what are the best ways to, I mean, deliver features or manage your features. It's necessary for you to have a, a flag management dashboard, which, which helps you manage these flags. There has to be a global governance enforcement, as we spoke about, so that governance is better. There's 
a flexible user targeting so so that your i mean your users uh, are are flexible in terms of uh, getting access to these features and you can you can build deploy and release uh, you know in a in a better sense and have 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 some public apis out there open source is is the way forward as as we mentioned and that's why i i spoke about the open feature tool as well and lastly as as uh, we we spoke about feature flags i mean it's 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 a great way for not just an organization but an individual developer itself to align closely to the users and simplify the access to features and it it helps organizations with another layer of control velocity and risk management over the software delivery process and while uh, it seems simple uh, obviously there are so much there's so much more that comes up as a challenge with feature flags and with with that you know you you need to continue to scale improve your feature management side of things ensure that there are minimal rollbacks and how how you can you can deliver feature in the better sense and and obviously release confidently with with pipelines so with this i think we we come to the end of this uh, talk but uh, in the end obviously i'll like to give you a gist of things that uh, you know we spoke about how how feature flags are essential what are the risks during software delivery and uh, obviously how how you can ensure that software delivery is managed in a in a better sense you can ship code faster and toggle around your features as and when required so that you can deliver them to the end users in 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 a better sense and and mitigate all the risks that uh, come come up with the challenges of software delivery and for that i also would love to invite you to the feature flags community that we are building it's a meetup group as well as the slack community and we we will talk more from a community aspect about feature flags uh, what can be done better why is feature flags not just essential for developers but all personas and obviously we we look forward to learn more alongside you in terms of feature management and feature flags so with this, uh, thank you so much for tuning in and see you next time.